Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract, that little fellow there, and we're going to tell a Zim story. And it's in a Zim book, so I can pick up the pages and change the pages. Isn't that cool? And here we have a new circle that is 100 in radius in yellow, and we're centering it on the stage and dragging it. Woohoo! We've taken an asset that's a CreateJS logo, and we've scaled it to the circle, 50% of the width or 50% of the height, whichever is the minimum. And then we're centering that on the circle so it all goes together. Zim was built on CreateJS and adds lots of conveniences, components, and controls. Here's an example of a convenience, a circle. Oh, just so easy. And we're centering it. We don't have to think about how to do that. And there we are dragging it. This just saved about, oh, I don't know, 20 lines of code in CreateJS. Yay! And there's all sorts of more options there, too. Let's see what's on the next page. Oh, it's a new emitter. And we're centering that on the page. That's a control. Isn't that great? Because we're controlling all of these balls. But they don't have to be balls. It could be anything. We could emit fire or sparkles or stars or snow. We can also start it paused and then spurt any number we want later. Is the emitter still there? Oh, would you look at that? Isn't that magical? Here we have a new Zim rectangle that is blue, and we're center regging that so that as it animates, we're animating the scale to three. As we animate, it animates about its center. We're also changing the color to pink. We're looping and rewinding true. Isn't that just so easy to read compared to CSS animation or any other animation? That's what's so great about Zim. It just like reads like a book. Here as well, we're adding parameters as a configuration object. We call this the Zim Duo technique because we can add them here with the names of their parameters as properties, or we can add parameters as uh, regular parameters <laughs> where we don't specify the name, we just put them in order. So we call that the Zim Duo technique. It makes using Zim very, very convenient. Ah, it's a color picker. What color do you want to try? Mmm, boy, that's orange. <laughs> Let's try. Ah, nice olive. And we can close that if we want. This is a new color picker. And if we say dot show, it will appear in the middle. It's a little bit different. We just usually pop up. It's like a pop-up window. Our pane does that as well. Pane, zim pane. We can show and hide. There we are. When we change the color, we're setting the, um, the frame's color. In this case, it was just that page's color to whatever the selected color is and updating. Zim a lot like JavaScript? <laughs> because it is. <laughs> there we are setting a JavaScript variable. Hello from Zim. And here we are calling a function. This function's special. It keeps track of which colors in this case. Uh, it could keep track of anything, numbers, etc. It's a Zim series. Now we're making a new tile right here. And we're tiling. The object that we're tiling is this label. And it says greet. We have a size of 50 and a font of impact, and there's the colors right there. So this will pick the next available color. This is a Zim V value for dynamic parameters that get picked. We could do the same thing here by passing in a min and max object, and then Zim would pick between that min and max. If we passed in an array of fonts, uh, then Zim would pick from that array of fonts. Here, Zim's picking from a series of colors. Wow, that makes Zim so powerful to have dynamic parameters. In our tile, we're specifying a row of six and a spacing V of 20. We don't have any columns, but we could have columns. And we're centering and dragging that. What that will mean is the drag is put on the container. It means that any of its children will get dragged. Isn't that cool? If we wanted to drag the whole container, we would say all colon true. 
Here we brought in an asset and we're going to chop it up. We're chopping up the picture into three by three and adding it to a scrambler. And now we can pick these up and see if we can, <laughs> look at that, <laughs> see if we can solve this thing. That head goes up there. What's that? That's a cat body, maybe down here. And then this goes there, that goes over. Ah, oh, we did it. And there can be an event for when this is complete. We haven't added that, but that's the scrambler. Amazing, a puzzle with two lines of code. Oh, wow. Here we have a path and Zim specializes in paths. We can change this path. Woo and it follows. We can also drag the part along the path. Woo neat, huh? Let's try a loop to loop. Wow, isn't that amazing? Watch this, when we change the page and change back. Oh my goodness. Isn't that so cool? We've got a new path that's a squiggle and we've said on top false so that when we drag the squiggle, it doesn't come up onto the top. Normally the things we drag come up above. If we wanted to, we could set the squiggle to be interactive false and then you can specify squiggles with points. It's called uh, pizzazz four where we can specify blob and squiggle points. And then you can animate along that path. You could even set the squiggle to invisible and you would only see the animation along the path. We've got a circle, we're adding it and we're animating it along the path right here. In two seconds, we're setting drag to true. And we start paused. Uh, normally that would then start at the animation paused, but we're going to say start paused false and that allows it to both animate and be draggable. Fantastic, again, very, very readable. And Zim is probably industry leading when it comes to dragging on paths, animating along paths, changing paths and squiggles. It's uh, most amazing. Here we have a pen. Ooh, this is the Zim pen. Ah, look at that, isn't that beautiful? There it is, it's a pen. We're setting the color to a series and that makes it go in a series of colors like that. We're also animating the size. So the pen size is getting bigger and then smaller, rewinding and then looping back to small. <laughs> Phenomenal. We're moving that pen with a motion controller on press move. Fantastic. It's a synth tone and we've got a circle, which kind of looks like a saucer, doesn't it? And we're scaling it a little bit to make it oval. We're centering it and wiggling its Y about the stage height, 50, at least 50 pixels in the Y, up to 250 pixels. That's the, the range. And then this is the time range, 0.2 seconds to one second. We're wiring that up to the tone, the synth tone its frequency property. And depending on the Y property of the circle, we're changing the frequency of the synth. Now up is closer to zero in the Y, which is lower in the synth frequency. So we've switched it to basically take the inverse of that with a filter. Ah, oh, this is so amazing. Let's go back to the start. Dink. Look at this book. By the way, for the pen, we restart the pen so that you can redraw if you want to. Neat. And now we're going to use arrows. So here we are using arrows to go through the pages of the Zim book. Fantastic. These are just some of the basics of Zim. And what I'd like to do now is take you through what can be built with basics like this. Here we have saucers making sounds. <laughs> cool. On the front page of Zim, you can open up the cat and go past all what's new in Zim Cat. And you can find more sounds. For instance, we're almost there, surely. Oh, lots of new things. Here's a synthesizer. 
We have to interact to make sounds play these days. We can also use a touchpad to play sounds. Here we can tune the car. If we look at the examples on Zim, we can scroll down past the features and arrive at the collections, or indeed press collections, and you'll see how we can find the components in Zim. Look at all these components that are available for us. These are only about half of them. The components are also accessible. Here's Zim Accessibility. It works with screen readers. All the components and other features are available in the docs here on the Zim site. Here are the components. You can open up any of them, such as this button, and get all of their parameters, oh my goodness, and find out how to use them and what the parameters mean, as well as any methods, and properties, and events. You can view the code, see bits examples, which are 64 small examples, and also see vids. To learn how to use Zim, you would go to the Learn section, where you can try out basics of Zim right in a browser. There's a fantastic video series called Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding and Zim. It's also supported by Zim School, super for teachers, kids, lessons with online examples and online tutorials. And then Kids, a fantastic site with all sorts of color helps kids learn how to code. We've got Guides on Medium by Dr. Abstract. That's me. And then a whole series of tutorials, including 64 Zim bits. Back on the main page of Zim, there are 10 banners as to what you can make with Zim. These were launched in Zim 10. We're now on Zim Cat. If you open up the banners, you can see examples of things that can be made with Zim, and you can press on those examples to try them out. Look at the beautiful embedded interface there. This is on CodePen, so you're welcome to see the code as well, right here. And there's all sorts of comments in the code. This was made with Zim Generator. Each of these sections can open up as well, more, and show you more about how we can make art. The different things in Zim that allow us to make art. Here are games. Physics games, isometric board games, mobile apps, physics games, patterns. Wow, neat, huh? And again, a more section, which opens up to talk about hit tests and sprites, physics, how things are being used in the industry and in education, gamification. So please go through those for different interactive logos, amusements, data visualization, learning apps. Sim has lots to do with learning and a lot of people out there in the world all over making e-learning apps. Here's an example of a Zim e-learning app. That's a progress bar as we load the various images and sounds for our e-learning quiz move the words to the matching animal. There we are using a scrambler. Look at that. Here's a hippo. An alligator. That's the emitter. It's all embedded here. Play the sound and press the matching animal. 
find the matching Ooh, animals. Ooh, do you remember this game? Oh, mm. Try again. Try again. Oh. Hey. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Move letter. Unscramble the, the picture. Move the animals to their home. Oh, I think we did it. <laughs> Press where the pictures are Woo different. Are different. Woo Woo yeah. Connect the dots so to show the connector. animal. Oh, oh try, try again. again. Oh, you've done it. You want to see it till the end, don't you? <laughs> are we unlocking the child? Woo <laughs> But Zim isn't only about kids. We also have e-learning apps for more adult learners, like f learning physics. Oh, there's some, some graphics and photons and oh my goodness. This was uh, a comic strip for the M New York Museum of uh, Science. Here's e-learning rebuilding charts used in college and yeah, more kids stuff we also made a mobile app with kids stuff why don't we go back and take a look at how zim works with mobile so if you go to the code section in zim there's the template where you can grab a template to start working in zim but here are zaps Ooh. so zaps is a way that we can make progressive web apps for mobile and it's uh, there's a tool, a Zim Zaps tool that you can go to to do that, which is cool. Uh, under PWA, let's see, Progressive Web Apps, we made this one, Groovity, as a PWA. So this would load without a browser and without the internet on a mobile app. And look at what we're using. We're using dragging along a path. Isn't that neat? It also, for mobile and PWA, it will cache all of this stuff. Well, mind you, this is vector-based, so it's not that bad anyway. But it caches any images and sounds, and so things will load right away with the PWA. And like I said, we've got that tool, the PWA tool, that does that. The code section also has how Zim works with Adobe, Adobe Animate with Zim Shim. There's the CDN. There's all sorts of uh, help, including Slack and Discord. We'd love to see you there. GitHub. There are tools that work with Zim, such as Zim Distill, that minifies only the code that you use, makes Zim really small. We've got TypeScript support, Node Package Manager, examples of MVCs, Model View Controller. And then libraries to help you, like sockets and games, physics, and Zim with 3, 3.js, and the pizzazz libraries. At the bottom is Zim Base, which works with PHP and MySQLi to make data very, very easy, along with Zim Bind. <laughs> Things that developers might know about. Speaking of developers, if we go back to the main page here, there's the devs site for developers, which talks about how we can embed the components and the dragging and the animation sprites and more. And there's a bunch of examples as you page through these. How you can embed it into React and Vue, Angular some examples of what's being made with Zim. The Code in 5 Minutes series and more. The tools, the versions. <laughs> so if you're a developer, come on in and check out that. There's just so much to look at with Zim. Down here in the gold bars, oh, there's an intro. That's a well-documented way to get into Zim as well. Uh, the lab, you can check things out right online in the lab. And some silly examples in there. Zim Tips is a super place to make sure that uh, you understand the latest way that we're working with Zim because many of the vids are, you know, a few years old. So we, you want to make sure that you've got the latest way under Zim Tips here. There's school and kids. And please come on in, check out uh, all of the videos. Hello, this is probably where you came Zim from. Zim 
There are intro videos, a couple we'll post in the link here. This is the new intro video. <laughs> what do you know? But please take a look at our last two intro videos because that takes us through an exciting look of, uh, of those examples as well. There's the creative coding lessons, the bubbling videos, uh, over well, about 150 videos of anything that's new with Zim. So you should check that out. The Code in 5 Minute series is a wonderful place to begin as well. It only takes you five minutes each. Aha! There's a bunch of them there. Zim Explorers are longer. If you want to spend an hour with us, <laughs> then come on into Zim Explorer, etc., etc., etc. It has been a delight to take you through Zim. I am Dr. Abstract, and uh, come find out the latest news here at the news section. Uh, what's bubbling and uh, I look forward to seeing you in our social areas. That would be super. Uh, we have a Q&A happening at Discord, Zim Zooms, where we meet with people from around the world. So I hope we see you there. I'm Dr. Abstract, this little guy here, and this has been a Zim story. It's a wonderful world coding creativity. Cheers. <laughs>